is my first car. His heart and soul. Just got that off your C56. We're going to give you the latest version of your high school car. Every piece we see here is going to need some work. Hey, watch this. Mike, I'm really sorry. <laughs> we'll make everything a little stronger and stand the test of time. We should just being a stubborn son. Whoever did that should be in handcuffs right now and put in jail. These flames on Lee's car are definitely out of style. I feel pretty good about coming up with another color combo for him. He doesn't want to paint it at all. He does not want to paint it? No. I'm Joe Martin. I've been building cars and bikes since I was just a little kid. My team hunts down rusted wrecks. Well, let's get to work, man. Come on. We knock out the ugly and put in the cool. And turn these buckets of rust into street cars. This is Iron Resurrection. So we got a call, and our friend Lee is coming in today. We built the GTO for Lee. The bright orange GTO. Yeah, I'm ready to put my foot into this. I feel like the GTO is a bit of a uh, in-person interview. A test trial, if you will. And we passed it. Now we're getting the real project. We're getting his heart and soul today. Came out to get my 56 overhaul rejuvenation on it. What's going on, Lee? What's happening? Damn, Lee, it looks like you just drove off the set of American Graffiti, man. <laughs> yeah, it's about that old. <laughs> it's my first car, so I'm really attached to it. Man, I, I wish I had my first car. I don't even like my first car, but I wish I had it because it was my first car. Paid 400 bucks for it. You can believe that. Hey, Lee, Lee what's going on right here, man? Oh, that's my packaging tape right there. I had to keep the bondo from coming all off. It's holding the flames on, Lee. Yeah. That's the first I've ever seen that. Yeah. I mean, I've it's seen everything worse. from chicken wire to newspaper. The bondo is coming off the panel, and so the paint is cracking. To keep it on there, he put packing tape. So now that you guys have made Lee feel bad about his car, <laughs> what do you want us to do with this thing? Well, we're going to change it up a little bit. I've never had AC or power steering in this. It's, you know, so I'm ready to... Get some coilover shocks and another rear end, another motor, another transmission, new paint. These flames on Lee's car are definitely out of style. They probably look cool 30, 40 years ago, but they're definitely dated now. Let's take a look under the hood. So this is this is what I've been running for 50 years. So it's kind of nasty and dirty. But there's some of these parts you can use, maybe. I, I think he wants to keep all his red loom. Uh, that'll be the first to go, Lee. There's nothing wrong with that red loom. And the yellow wires here. Come on. Come on. Looks like uh, ketchup and mustard in there, sir. Sure. He's done what he's had to do to, you know, to keep it preserved, locked in time. But now it's time to break that bubble and get it up to present day. Well, Lee, we're going to give you the latest version of your high school car. The Joe Martin. You know what I mean? Special. He's a little apprehensive about some of our ideas, but we're going to just give it an updated version. I'm pretty stoked about doing a 56 Chevy because you know, we really haven't worked on these cars very much. I can't wait to get my hands on this thing. <laughs> I love 56 out of the tri fives, the fives, six, and sevens. I think 56 is my favorite because the others seem to be more common. It's just not that often you see 56. I'm definitely honored that Lee trusts us to tear into his baby in the, in the car world. It's like the car's stuck in time. I think we're just gonna basically just blow the car apart and get the body blasted. I think we can maintain this frame, update it a little bit with some components. Just dress it up really nice, new interior. Basically just, just update it. So the guys are tearing into the 56, and we're not exactly sure what we're going to need just yet. However, we do know about this guy named Cooter. Cooter! Cooter. So we're going to go check out what he has, maybe list his inventory, and uh, hopefully he can help. This could be the Texas Bermuda Triangle. Either that or this is where Texas Chainsaw went down. Hi, are you Cooter? Yeah, yeah. Uh, my name's Daryl Huff. A lot of people from Austin call me Cooter. I just love these old cars and I'm just trying to find a home for them. We are about to start a 56 tri fi project, so we're just trying to get a feel of who's got what. I've got a little collection of tri fives out here. They're my poker chips. Well, let's go check out those cars if you don't mind. Okay. I got them all lined up down back here. And you and I are 
are not prepared for this. We are in shorts and tennis shoes. I should have worn my boots. Watch where you step to, because this is copper head lean out here. Oops. Next time we come, I'm going to bring a John Deere so I can clear a path. This is a 53. It's pretty much a complete car. That's a 53 Pontiac, straight eight. Look at this gangster ride. I know it. It is a gangster ride. There might be still some shine in one of these things. If the price was right, I'd probably sell this one. That's pretty safe to say on all these things, right? Yeah. Right? <laughs> Do you mind if I continue to take pictures? No, yeah, you, you can take pictures. I'm going to stay right here on high ground. <laughs> so I have a better POV of all the copperheads. Ah, I heard something move. Coming back. I know you're looking for 56 is the only 56 in this spot is that one right there and he's put pretty hold out i mean the chrome looks pretty good on it actually yeah this one's a, got a bent piece but the chrome on the back quarter isn't bad at all would you be willing to part with the chrome oh yeah that that's kind of the reason why i was showing you because yeah you know that, that chrome some of that chrome is working pretty big it really <laughs> actually is actually working on the hole every piece we've seen here is going to need some work yeah. So that's work, that's time, that's labor, that's money. Well, so I can um, get back to the shop and check it out, and then we'll see. Because that, that actually looks like it's in pretty good shape. So we just need to talk to the guys and figure out if they want us to come back out here and get this, or if they want to try to clean up what's on these cars. All right, boys, we got Lee's 56, man. What we're gonna do is just bag and tag everything and, and um, you know, keep all the bolts to everything. I'm getting hungry. I'm looking at these pitchforks, man. I know, man. It reminds me of a fork. Come on, pitchforks, man? Well, I want something. Next one needs some seafood. Yeah, yeah I don't even like seafood. A steak and lobster, man. Steak and lobster, we man. We are getting rid of that, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I feel pretty good about, you know, coming up with another color combo for him. Yeah, bring it up to 2018. Thanks. Exactly, man. That's what I'm trying to tell him. You got to appreciate it for what it was, you know. Old school cool. Old school cool, man. Well, we're going to uh, new school grind it off, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> let's start tearing it down, man. All right. Right here, Kayla. This thing definitely needs some love. Hey, guys. What's up? What's, up? What's going on? I oh, was tearing that Lee's ride. We're admiring Lee's ride. <laughs> admiring it and Ooh. tearing it down. Trying to knock the ugly out of it. Cool. Yeah, grind the ugly out of it. <laughs> Just speaking of that, can I talk to you for a second? Hey, I guess. <laughs> it's always a bad sign when a man that comes and pulls me aside to have a little chat. Yeah, especially this early in the build. What's wrong? So, um, you know, Lee's been kind of freaking out about this paint job on the car he called a few minutes ago you know he's had that car since he was 16 he's had the flames since the 80s and i guess he just it's an emotional thing for him he doesn't want to paint it at all he does not want to paint it no or my projects. So basically, it's obsolete paint. It doesn't have the longevity that today's urethanes have. It will be a problem to match kind of what's going on there in the problem areas. It's all old stuff. I mean, it needs to come off. Have him come up here. Okay, I'll have him come up. Call, call him. Don't be too hard on him, though. He's really stressing about it. <laughs> flames on it, kind of give it a modern look to it. I can live with that. With the old flames. You talking about saving your paint job? Yes. So we're going to put a new frame, new wheels, new brakes, new motor, new trans. Everything's going to be new, but flames. But we're going to use 30-year-old icing on top of that cake. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Joe doesn't like to copy stuff. You know, he likes to do his own thing. 
I can appreciate that. But I've seen a lot of flames, and I like these the best. It's kind of a bizarre situation. I mean, if all the updates were going to do this car and the money's going to spend, he's not going to paint it. The lacquer. You can't blend that in. Uh, I'd blend it with a, a, a sandblasting gun. <laughs> There's a lot of chips, so Shorty's going to have to get in here and blend this stuff and keep kind of the original look, but not create more work for ourselves by sanding into this car. Listen to me. I like those flames that are on. I know you do, Lee. I know you do. So, uh, I know you do. Well, I can tell you're sentimental to him. A little bit. Whatever makes him happy, Lee's a good customer, and who knows, maybe down the road he'll paint it. Let's get all the mechanicals going. Okay. And then we'll figure out those details of getting it touched up. Okay. When we get to that point. All right. Sounds good. Hey guys, Roy just pulled up with his car. Oh, there you are. Cool. What'd you get us in tonight, was it? Well, uh... <laughs> so we have a customer coming in today who has a race car that's apparently been wrecked. What's going on, Roy? Another hot day, Shorty. I know it. Hot day and a hot Roy. I know it. We're gonna do some paint work on this thing. This thing looks like a clean canvas. It's clean canvas. It's sure done. It's 33 Dodge left hand steer. Super gas drag car. We run a 427 rear Morrison small block Chevrolet on alcohol. Wow. It's kind of a one off deal. There's not a whole lot of roadsters that look like that. How fast does it go? It runs low eight and a quarter. We do eight mile rate drag racing, straight line. If everything goes right, we keep it straight. But it didn't. It went straight down concrete wall. We we'll look pretty good after the wreck, man. He straightened it out pretty good. Went crashed the whole front. And luckily, Eddie didn't get hurt. Our wallet did, but. Everything else is good. We spent a lot of time getting the body right, and we wanted somebody to really put a nice shine on it. Well, man, you guys got your own rendering, huh? Sure. Yeah, Eddie, Eddie did that. Oh, cool. The color combo is awesome, man. I love it. Joe's an artist. He usually likes to kind of go wild on the paint jobs, especially on the creative aspect of the paint jobs, the graphics. Pearl white it, and we'll come in and figure out where this area is. We'll do all this fade, and then we start laying all this out. And then determine where our silver leaf goes, and then we'll do shadows after. And then we got a few other details, like the chrome simulation of the grill. Get that front end airbrush. Do a little grill, a little chrome grill. Okay. There. Yeah, like in the back. Huh? Yeah. Do some lettering on it, some striping. You don't have to mess with any of this. Nothing. Just strictly paint job. Block it, paint. Block it. Sort of. Apparently, it flies down the racetrack, so he's got to have a paint scheme that matches the speed that he's moving down the track. So hopefully, it's gonna match up. We got the 56 pulled in here, and Mike and Farron are gonna tear the uh, body off the frame, get the motor out, get everything disassembled so we can start sandblasting the frame. Getting her apart. Glow in the shirt. Oh my god. Now it's gonna be easier because they're gonna go to 
us at one time. That's right. You used yeah. to call each of us and, and try to beat us down on price, and now we're just going to put one price together. Yeah. Go up. Now that you guys are going big time, don't forget about us. You always have the hookup with us. All right. Yeah. Have right. we ever let you down before? Don't answer that. This trip to Bama's <laughs> is off to an interesting start. To say the least. Well, that's good timing. Blasters are here. I guarantee you there's three-eighths to a half inch of muck. Dirt, grime, and grease. From right here back, yep. we just need cleaned up. But the blasters, they'll knock all that stuff off for us. Look at it, Fern. That knocked about 70 years off of it, right? Damn. We actually got something we can weld to to put our new four linking stuff on it. We're going to get some blasting done on the body of this car. The simple fact we're going to put some big tires on it, that means we're going to have to put some big tubs under it. That's probably good right there, fellas. Lee's going to keep all that original paint on the car. We don't want to knock it off with any sandblast because we don't want to have to go back and try to blend because we have enough problems blending this original paint in. We don't want to have any more problems. But that looks good, Con. That'll save me about a day yeah, cool. of cleaning. It'll save me a lot of cussing. And... Yeah, save me a whole lot of cussing. Yeah, a whole lot of cussing, right? Absolutely. <laughs> What's your head? Well, man, that thing looks a lot better, sir, Doc. That's great, man. Lee had some uh, roofing tar on the bottom of the car, sir, Doc. Hey, did you see it, Joe? Hey, hey no, shorty, no look. It looks no, no. like it's an old license plate. The number six had a little star. He wasted a uh, yeah. good minute to Texas license plate, man. Oh, it sure is. Look at that. You Look see at that? that? It looks like him and Bama have been hanging out together. Man, they damn sure <laughs> look like it. Looks like it. gonna put Lee's 56 Chevy frame on the frame table and we're gonna add the Ford link. Woo! All right, well, hell, let's center it up, man. So we get the frame put right in the middle. So if it based off the center line, everything's gonna go off it and we know our measurements will be correct. We're gonna cut the front clip. It's kind of an economical way to make some suspension improvement. The frame's actually pretty stout. It's just kind of crude. It just makes it difficult to add power rack and pinion. We saw it. Want to improve the drivability of the car. It's all yours, Slam. There you go. One front clip. We got the stock front frame stub cut off. We don't need that, right? We don't need that. Now, we'll clean all this stuff up. These right here can be cut. You'll see them tweaked and out of alignment, kicked over to one side. Make everything a little stronger and stand the test of time. I got three left. A good, a good nine inch. So I sent Shaggy the man to Bama Brown. Bama seems to have a horde of old four nine inches, so I thought I'd send him over to Rated Stash. All right, we got three to choose from. All right, there you go. Take the one you want. How about this? To save some time for us having to come back or you having to deal with Mike, pick the best one. What's he going in? It's a 56. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, to go with these longer ones, 56, either, either one of these two, because those were truck and they got the three inch axle all the way. So now that he's lied to us, Steve, when it comes down to Bam and Steve, I trust Steve. I'd go with this one in the middle right here. I can tell you this Steve always says he guarantees stuff. Steve is always just like, I'm standing behind my word. If this isn't good, the money back guarantee. Steve. Money back guarantee. Steve. If Bamba was a stranger, I would pick this one in the middle. Why? There's things to look for that I would look for and that Bamba would look for. No, I just, I just look for the money. Now, you would eliminate this one because if y'all narrow that one down or do anything to it, you're limited on what you can do. These two, you can pretty much do it. But looking at these, I'm looking at the oil, the wear on them. This one has fresher oil coming off of it. So okay. Bama just probably got this one recently. Okay. And the people either aren't missing it. It hasn't been reported missing yet. That didn't sure. make me happy, by yeah. the way. I yeah. wanted to keep that no, one. No, I still so. got some oil. We'll okay, on the good. Yeah, that's, he's got the oil to pour on <laughs> yeah, make it look fresh. Right so, here. Reyes, we're going to go with the middle one. Yes, Let's I'll go, go with the middle low. one, of course. Going to Bama's is always a good time. Thanks, Bama. Yeah, sure. Thanks for the moral support. I mean, sometimes it's a bad aftertaste. Thanks for coming out. Who do we pay? I feel like we owe Steve money. We never know if it's worthwhile until a couple of days later. 
So we'll let you know in about 48 hours. We got the new front end for the 56 Chevy. Got it all squared, leveled. Are we gonna rock, paper, scissors? Who's gonna weld this, or you just wanna weld it? I'm not gonna play because I'm gonna lose, so. So you just wanna go ahead and weld? I just will. Just go ahead and weld, son. We just brought our buddy Brian in, and he's an excellent mechanic. Just a good jack of all trades. So we put him on this 56 start thrashing. We got the front all pretty much welded in and mocked up. Right now, now we're back on the back, installing the four-link kit. Got to do a little trimming on it. Are we going to go tap it in, or are we waste it way long? Let me go to the sander. Let me go to the sander, take a little bit off each Okay, just a scotch. Just a scotch. Go get it tacked in, and should be ready to throw it under the car. Get the rear end mounted. Hopefully get the body set back on the frame here pretty soon. So what we need to do is just block it, we hit it with 220, okay. dry, and then hit it with 400 wet. Okay. I'm Aiden, and over the summer here, I'm going to be working for Joe at Martin Brothers. This would be a good uh, project to break in for your summer break job, brother, right here. He's got this race car going out here, and we're basically just sanding off all the primer. That way it'll get real nice and smooth. Putting the guide coat on there, it just helps you get down to where it needs to be smooth. Once all this black is gone, it's good. We get this done, we get some paint on. Hey, you fellas want to help make push this thing under there? We got the frame here for the 56. I mean, I know y'all busy and everything. We've got the front clip welded on, some of the rear support is welded on. It's never too busy for you, Mike. I mean it from right here, from on the bottom. There we go. You got it, Brian? Yeah. Line her up. That's kind of the moment of truth. We're fixing to lower the body down. There's always a concern for alignment, you know, making sure everything's square. Yeah. Things can move. We need to pull this forward like this so it won't hit. And uh, with Lee's latest decision to keep all the original paint on the car, you got to be careful not to damage what's already there. We ain't never had one line up this good. We'll get some bolts going. Throw Mike up in the car, drop some bolts in and stuff. We're gonna get it mounted down. Look here, Brian. What you got? I got a uh, a griddle, a dry fry griddle. What else you gonna find in there? I got the place settings for it uh, right here. This is when Lee had a chick, cause there's two of them up there. Well, that all equals good times right there, Mike. You know what I mean? And here's their bed roll. I'm gonna let you get that out of here. No, no, I'm all right. I mean, I can guarantee that thing's got cooties. Put some gloves on. It might. You know what I think? What? I think we need to get rid of Shag and hire you. We're piecing together this frame for Lee's 56, and Bama's history with some of these rear ends, man. I don't know where he comes up with these things. Are you telling me that something's wrong with this one? What's that look like? Was that on there, really? I'm going to tell you what that is right there. That's hammered dog. <laughs> We're trying to save a little money for the customer. We use a four nine inch, cut it down ourselves, and clean it up. You know, add a nice little center section. But that's the thing with Bama Brown. You can no telling what you're getting. I got you, dude. <laughs> Not me. I wasn't the mad one here. Here he comes now. I'm going to tell you what happened. There was three laying there, and that's the one Steve told him to get. It looks like somebody's just done some welding on it where this thing might leak, or who knows. Maybe the ring and pinion came apart inside. You don't have another housing, Bama. That's what we're getting at. I don't have another one. The other ones are gone. Man, we I'll let y'all pick. That was a pick of the litter right there. Is the other people that took the other ones, they don't call back or anything? No, I, I change the numbers constantly. I mean, you get what you pay for. You watch this. Mike, I'm really sorry. <laughs> well, you know, I'm a little leery about sending Shag and Amanda over to Bama's anymore. <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe I got you all again. We've already got the white pearl in the race car cleared and sanded, so the first color is the purple. That'll establish our first background color for all the graphics. It's actually called Purple Passion, so we're fixing to spray it with passion. We got passion.
So we got the purple laid out, then we can start scaling for all the other line work. We got us a new room here for the 56. We got one from Bama. Of course, we had to trash it because it's a piece of crap as always. So Joe went out digging around the boneyard and came out with this room. Brian and I, we've got it all mocked up, our brackets and stuff on it. What we're fixing to do now is set it up in the car and mock up all the brackets to the frame. That's pretty damn close right there. Okay. I like it. Everything's square, bars are parallel, everything looks good. So let's get it out of there, get it welded up. Already got the rear and all welded up. About to get in here and start cutting the wheel tubs out. So that way it'll accommodate the uh, big wheels are going to stick under. We're putting a 20 by 11 wheel under it. That's uh, so just all this factory stuff's got to come out. I'm mixing up another color for a race car. This is actually going to be the fade color. It has a little bit of a dark silver to it. There's many layers of process on these paint schemes. We got all these colors that overlay. The last color on here is black. And then we're gonna actually outline this so underneath by hand with a little bit of a blue. That goes on clear and uh, let it dry for a while. And then we can start putting the leaf on. The old art of, of leafing. Queens and the kings, they would decorate their carriages with this stuff. It's been around for years and years. I don't really think it'll ever go out of style. We're going to do a slight blue outline bordering the silver leaf. I'll go along there and drag it with the brush. and Hopefully the uh, color contrast is going to look pretty good. When you put these big tires in these cars, it changes the complete look of a car, not just from the back, just from the side, and just basically all the way around. Nibbler's in a good mood today. That's a good thing. This is the panel for the tub for the 56. This thing's like a day and a half long, it seems like. It's a simple tub to make, and it's just a matter of getting it rolled right. We'll get those things tacked in and sewn in. And this thing, the back work on this car will pretty much be done. Whose motor is this, Brucey? Lee's motor. Oh, is it good? We're about ready for it. One of the things we're doing to the 56 is getting rid of the small block down at the 327 and putting this LS3 in. This is definitely the way to go. It's 525 horse. I think drive around all day long. Have the AC on. Plenty of power, just no problems. I'll tell you one thing, the trim will save us having to cut the floor out, probably. Normally we do automatics in the cars, but I don't believe you want to turn some gears. We don't put the old stick ship in it. So it's going to look like it's always hand, but have all this useful, efficient, nice driving power underneath the car. Let's mock it up, fellas. This right here was done in 1968. After I got to digging in that 56 a little bit, I found this trans tunnel. Oh, here's the other half of it right here. That's what them old fellas did, you know. They just used what they had laying around and they put some carpet over there and they're huh? They're out uh, they're out hot riding again. That's the old school fabricating trick right there, ain't it? Yeah, sometimes those plates are 100, 150 bucks a piece. That should be a crime. Whoever did that should be in handcuffs right now if they're still living and put in jail. <laughs> Right now, we're going to take the motor over about 56, drop it down in the car, start packing our mounts and everything for it. Let's get it. Let's get it. The engine we're going to put in the 56 is an LS3, fuel injected, with a trimming five speed behind it. 56, it wasn't designed for that. It had a little small block in it that took up no room. Yeah, very simple design. So, we just got to modify a few things and then get it fit down in there good. Come down just a little bit. Oh, down? Yeah, down a little bit. It started out real easy. Man, we're going to have to do the super nose dive. And then it kind of had different uh, ideas for us. You stand on that if you can. Get the motor in the car. That's always kind of tricky, stabbing it in there. You hard-headed son of a We have the stock firewall, so it makes it tight. Yeah, we're hitting this stud right here. I mean, what the f***? Yeah, twist that away, any? We stick LSs and everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're on the pan on the cross member. Yeah. Hit it clear. 
give me a break. This 56 just does not want to stuck in there. Oh, he's just being a stubborn son. That's all. scream like a little girl and not get him every chance I can. It's all about the delivery. I mean, you gotta be quick, fast, and in a hurry. What are the going on? Back and through. They play around too much. I always play around too much. The king of freaking pranksters. Have you seen what he does to Papa? Daily? That's different, man. Oh, it's different. <laughs> Kato's whiter than the paint jobs we put on these cars. And it's not a good scene, believe me. Michael, stop it. You're like whiter than the race car I just painted. No, no, I'm clear. I There's a difference. I almost need to get some color and uh, paint him. So he can have better skin tone. They could have used you in, in the movie Powder. I mean, that boy, he's talking about pale white. That boy's pale white. <laughs> six lines representing that is a 56 and then the blue stitching on this because that Lee wants some contrasting stitching we got the frame for the 56 all powder coated and now the suspension needs to be finished up the control arms the QA ones are going in real nice starting to set up the brakes we get all the front end assembled, then we'll get the motor and trans set in it. Then we'll move to the back, get the rear built, uh, get it hung, set the body on it, and uh, go from there. Roy and Eddie are about to show up to uh, take a look at the race car. Oh, here they are now, man. Here they are now. Look at that. We got some other pieces in the booth that are still a little bit wet, so we can't totally assemble the car. 
And uh, so we're going to lay the little uh, old and new together. Here we got a really exciting day on this 56 of leaves. We get all the guys on it and the things start really happening quick. It's time to quit bitching and get the stitching and put this interior in this car. I think we like this pressure. I think the pressure activates everybody. Well, I think Lee's gonna be excited. The car looks really cool with the old paint on it and sitting on the new chassis and the new motor. <laughs> Cannot wait to drive this thing. How are you? Are you excited? We got Lee and his son Tyler coming in to take a look at the 56. Well, it's going to definitely exteriorly look similar. Yeah. But it sounds different. Yeah, I bet it does. Are you want you ready to see it? Yeah, I'm sure. Let's see it. I mean, are you sure? Yes, I'm ready. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Down. Getting the right rumble onto this car, it's kind of lit him up a little bit. Yeah, that looks good. Is that all I get, Lee? And it looks great. I uh, can't believe they've uh, made all the changes that they made. It looks really good. Thank you so much. Y'all did such a good job. I really Jeez, appreciate Lee. it. You digging it, Lee? Right? I'm, I'm loving it, man. How you been? It looks good. Hey, what's going on? I'm really impressed with the way it turned out. And I got to keep my paint, which is a biggie. That paint looks great. Do you like the paint job? Yeah, I do. <laughs> Even though it's the same paint job, it is a massive difference. Stance, wheels, tires. Independent front suspension, interior, bumpers. I mean, everything on it is updated except for the paint. I'm just glad that uh, you still have the original flames on here, Dad. You know, this is your first car right here, man. You know, at first, I was a little disappointed that we weren't going to paint the car. But it was kind of cool to retrofit the body on the really updated suspension. You know, he's got that old car, it's just stuck on top of a new car. I'm really stoked how it came out. Look inside. Yeah, I get in there. Oh man, I like this low to the ground. It used to, you needed a step ladder to get up in there and lead it. The stance, the wheels is what makes the car. So if the car looks wicked. It looks good. <laughs> <laughs> it feels good. I'm glad you like it. It's yours, baby. Uncle Lee's car to me is perfect. Just taking it from, you know, 30 or 40 years ago and then updating it in 2018. I think it's really cool. Is that a little tear in your eye, Uncle Lee? No. Yeah, Lee loves this thing. This is his car since he was in high school. It's up high. It does not get any better than that. Yeah, that's it. Even that old school. Oh, my. Look at that. There you go. Wow. Yeah, definitely going from the little small block you had to the LS3. This is the bigger LS3 in there uh, with the new five speed. Oh, I think he's uh, really going to enjoy all the modern goodies on it. It's a big improvement. The whole new suspension on there just drives totally different. I mean, with the whole new rear end, coilovers, front and back, it's just a world of difference. Got the rack and pinion? Yeah. It's a whole new car. Well, what do you say, Lee? You want to take a ride? I'm ready to take a ride. I want it to sound badass. I want it to really sound bad. And it does. Yeah, yeah, man. You're getting too excited, man, on that gas pedal. Oh, yeah. I like these clutches and the brake and all that. It looks so much better. It looks cool, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. And I knew your neighbors would love this exhaust system. I will definitely hear Lee coming. Yeah, he's a quiet guy with a poker face, but you will hear him coming. <laughs> wait, are we doing it? Wait, hold on. We're really? doing it. We're doing oh, this. Okay. Catch up, man. <laughs> I don't have beef jerky in my teeth, do I? <laughs> kind of looks like a teenage meat ninja turtle, don't it? <laughs> You know, Lee, we built Lee that super dope. Hold on, I don't like dope. <laughs> Fred <Fretting> under my <laughs> <laughs>
1956. We're going to give you the latest version of your high school car. Every piece we've seen here is going to need some work. Hey, watch this. Mike, I'm really sorry. <laughs> we'll make everything a little stronger and stand the test of time. We should be a stubborn son. Whoever did that should be in handcuffs right now and put in jail. These flames on Lee's car are definitely out of style. I feel pretty good about coming up with another color combo for him. He doesn't want to paint it at all. He does not want to paint it? No. I'm Joe Mark. I've been building cars and bikes since I was just a little kid. My team hunts down rusted wrecks. Well, let's get to work, man. Come on. We knock out the ugly and put in the cool. And turn these buckets of rust into street art. This is Iron Resurrection. So we got a call, and our friend Lee is coming in today. We built the GTO for Lee. The bright orange GTO. Yeah, I'm ready to put my foot into this. I feel like the GTO is a bit of a uh, in-person interview. A test trial, if you will. And we passed it. Now we're getting the real project. We're getting his heart and soul today. Came out to get my 56 overhaul rejuvenation on it. What's going on, Lee? What's happening? Damn, Lee, it looks like you just drove off the set of American Graffiti, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's about that old. It's my first car, so I'm really attached to it. Man, I, I wish I had my first car. I don't even like my first car, but I wish I had it because of my first car. Paid 400 bucks for it. You can believe that. Hey, Lee, Lee, what's going on right here, man? Oh, that's my packaging tape right there. I had to keep the bondo from coming all off. It's holding the flames on, Lee. Yeah. That's the first I've ever seen that. Yeah. I mean, I've it seen everything worse. from chicken wire to newspaper. The bondo is coming off the panel, and so the paint is cracking. To keep it on there, he put packing tape. So now that you guys have made Lee feel bad about his car, <laughs> what do you want us to do with this thing? Well, we're going to change it up a little bit. I've never had AC or power steering in this. It's, you know, so I'm ready to... Get some coilover shocks and another rear end.